Is it God's will for me to be healed? Part four. Hey, welcome to today's little lesson, another special edition in Central Africa, in the DR Congo. We're asking a question, is it God's will for me to be healed? And if you are sick, this is an important question for you. And if you ever might be sick, this is an, this is an important question for you. If you know anybody who's sick or diseased, this is an important question for you too, because maybe you could be a blessing to them and encourage them to have faith. And we cannot deny that faith is part of the equation, right? I mean, Jesus did say in Matthew 21, 22, everything you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. So the antithesis of that is everything you ask in prayer that you don't believe you won't receive. James echoed that. He says, does any of you lack wisdom? Let him ask of God who gives to all men generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But that's not where James ends. He says, but let him ask in faith. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the waves. Well, now listen to this. Let not that man expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. You see, now people get mad about that, but okay, you're getting mad about the Bible. James, inspired by the Holy Spirit, said that. You don't have faith, don't expect to receive anything from the Lord. But... All things are possible to him who believes. And so if, if, if your understanding of healing is all based on, you know, the experiences of other people, good people who didn't get healed and health and wealth preachers who didn't get healed, as I talked about in that previous little lesson, you know, you're making a big mistake. Look at what the word says. Well, here we read, we read from, from Exodus chapter uh, 20, Exodus 15, verse 26, God says, if you'll diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes. So here's the obedience stuff, right? And give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. So this is a pretty straight line thing too. It's not like, you know, just be casual in your relationship and in your obedience to me, man. Get with the program, buddy. Get with the whole program, buddy. If you'll do that, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, am your healer. So there's a relationship between health and, uh, and, and, and obedience, and obedience and health. And again, people get mad about that too. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just reading from the Bible. Don't get mad at me. I'm just the messenger boy. I'm the newspaper delivery guy. I didn't write it, okay? And, and, and so, you know, if I, would, if I would get sick right now and die live on this camera, that doesn't change what we just read there. You, you, you can assume that I, did, I missed it somewhere. Don't assume that, oh, it wasn't God's will for David to be healthy. It must have been God's will. God's sovereign, you know. And so I guess it was his will for David to die right then. Come on, come on. You know, wise up. <laughs> you know, look at what the Bible has to say. God cannot lie. And so if any Israelite found themselves sick, what they needed to do was examine themselves and see, am I, am I diligently listening to the voice of the Lord my God? Am I doing what is right in his eyes? Am I giving ear to his commandments? Am I keeping all his statutes? And if they come up with the answer, no, I'm not, then what should they do? They should repent and straighten it out and then God is good, God is gracious, God, God will keep his promise to them because he's not a liar. They'd be healed then if they do that. Didn't Jesus say to one guy one time, you know, after he healed him, go and sin no more that nothing worse may befall you? Is that in the Bible anywhere? Yeah, so am I telling you that, oh, you're, you, the reason that you're ill is because you sinned? No, I, what, what business do I have to telling you that? But I can tell you that it could be. It could be. And you need to let's take a look at yourself, examine yourself. Paul wrote to the Corinthians. Now, let, let's, let's go further. Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he said, you know, you, know, you know, for this reason, many among you are weak and you're sick and a number of you sleep. Why? Because you didn't judge yourself. You didn't do what I just said the Israelites needed to do. Judge yourself. And, and so he said, so therefore you get disciplined by the Lord. So God's discipline can come in the form of weakness, sickness, and premature death. And, and, and from that verse in Corinthians, you know, it becomes obvious. Paul 
consider that not to be God's best. That's not normal. That's not the normal Christian experience. That's the abnormal Christian experience because we're supposed to be obedient. We're supposed to be following Jesus. We're not supposed to be weak and sick and dying because we didn't judge ourselves. But if we refuse to judge ourselves, you know, examine ourselves and repent of what we find ourselves guilty of, well then we're not in a position to receive God's best. Yeah, sure. So again, I'm, 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 not, I'm not, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Okay, so I, the Lord, am your healer, but it's contingent. My, you experiencing me being your healer is contingent upon you doing what I say. Amen. And we got these, you know, guys preaching about healing and they make it all about faith. And there's no doubt faith is a component, but they're oftentimes preaching to people who are not a position to, to receive healing, not because of any faith problem, but because of an obedience problem. You know, they're doing what they know they shouldn't be doing or vice versa. They're not doing what they should be doing. And, uh, hey, you know, we're all in this together. <laughs> I'm, and I've certainly fallen short myself many times. And I tell you what, but when I find myself sick or, you know, again, when I, when I get a cold, I, I realize that oftentimes I just got a cold or if I cut my finger or something, you know, but if it's something serious, I seek the Lord, and I have had a couple of serious things at times, and I seek the Lord. Oh, Lord, I want to be in your will. I want to, you know, want to be in a position for your blessing, so show me. And of course, God shows us. Don't, you don't have to drag anything up for yourself to condemn yourself. God shows us. He loves us. God loves us. All right. Well, let's look at another promise. This is a faith-building promise from... Exodus chapter 23, again to the Israelites, but this is from the God who never changes. He said, you shall serve the Lord your God, Exodus 23, 25, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from you. Oh, why? Well, he's the healer. He's the healer. Nothing's too hard for him. He's the healer. Well, look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse number 15. Again, a promise to the Israelites. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness and none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which you knew, he will he inflict on you, but he will lay them on those who hate you. So once again, a, a, a revelation under the old covenant of Jehovah Rapha, the God who is the healer. And you know, when Jehovah Rapha showed up on the earth in the form of the person Jesus Christ, what was he doing? He was forgiving sins and he was healing people. <laughs> and he healed a lot of people, okay? So, so let your faith be encouraged today by this, okay? Look to the Lord as your healer. Oh my goodness, he's good and his mercy endures forever. I right, hope to see you next time. God bless you.